Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest is a New York Times bestselling author with over 40 million copies sold and 29 novels that have earned her a place as one of the world's most beloved storytellers. Well, in her latest novel, By Any Other Name, it tackles one of the greatest mysteries in literary history. Could Shakespeare's plays have been influenced by or even written by a woman? Oh. <laughs> so here to tell us more, Jody Pico is back. Yeah. So, Jody, tell us more about this woman and how you came to write about her. So, you know, I was an English major. I fell in love with Shakespeare. And the reason I loved him was because of these amazing feminist characters, right, in the plays. I'd never seen women written that way that far back in history. And then I learned that Shakespeare himself had two daughters who he never taught to read or write. They signed with an X. And I was like, mm, I don't buy this. And when I was digging a little deeper and reading an amazing article by a woman named Elizabeth Winkler, she introduced me to the name Amelia Bassano. And um, Amelia Bassano is half of the focus of By Any Other Name. It's a book about how women have been written out of history by the men who were writing the history. And it starts by following Amelia in 1581. She's a real life historical figure. And she's a female playwright who can't get her plays in front of the public because she's a female playwright in right. Elizabethan England. And so she pays a man for the use of his name. And that man's name happens to be William Shakespeare. And the other half of the story is her fictional descendant, who is a female playwright now, working for Broadway, named M Melina Green. She writes a play about her ancestor and can't get any traction because it's about a woman's story and Broadway is a very male-dominated world. And the question is whether she too is gonna write herself out of history in order to see her words on the stage. But what we know about Shakespeare, what we actually know from primary sources, is not what you think. We know that he was a businessman and a producer and an actor. We know that he evaded taxes twice. We know that he had multiple restraining orders taken out against him by business colleagues. He jacked up the price of grain during a famine and made his neighbors pay it. Does he sound like anyone you know in America right now? <laughs> um, and <laughs> he also never left the country but wrote about places like Denmark yeah. and Italy and Egypt with details like where the closets are in the Queen of Denmark's bedchamber. He um, was not formally educated, may not even have gone to grammar school, which is okay. But when he died, he didn't own a single book. So where was he learning all the stuff he needed to know for these plays? So now enter Amelia. Amelia is born to an Italian family of musicians that are so talented, they get moved over to England to become the recorder consort to King Henry VIII and then to Queen Elizabeth I. She was Jewish, and when she got to England, she had to hide her faith like the rest of her family. At age seven, she becomes the ward of a countess who gives her this full classical and legal education, so her mind is sparking. At age 12, she winds up living with the Countess's brother. He's the ambassador to Denmark, and that summer he does take a diplomatic mission to Denmark where he meets the king and the queen and an astronomer named Tycho Brahe, whose supernova is the beginning of Hamlet, and Tycho Brahe's relatives who just happen to be named Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Ah, okay? No way! And um, then the next year, at age 13, she becomes the mistress of the Lord Chamberlain of England. He is 56. She's 13. Okay. I know. Okay. He is in charge of all theater in England. So for the 10 years she lives with him, she is learning about every play that's written, crosses his desk. <clears throat> she meets the playwrights, all the actors, the producers. And then she gets pregnant. And 10 years after, at age 23, mm. she winds up being married off to an abusive man who's her cousin. She's broke. She has a baby. She has a husband she hates. And we don't hear about her for 20 years. And suddenly she shows up as the first published female poet ever in all of England, mm. which is huge, right? Mm, right? But you know, you don't just show up at age 43 as a woman in Elizabethan England and get published. Mm -hmm. She clearly was writing before that, and I think she was using Shakespeare's name to do it. Okay, oh, so here's wow. the question. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Fascinating. Yeah. But there are people who have devoted their entire lives and careers yeah. to studying Shakespeare. Absolutely. So there's got to be pushback oh, against what you're Oh, they are not happy with me. Okay. You know, so <laughs> it's, not, it's not a new thing to say, okay, oh, okay. maybe Shakespeare didn't write his plays. But to be honest, the minute you suggest that a woman did, they get really angry. Oh, that's, yeah. Oh, and, you know, this has only been recently posed that there might be some women who were writing at the time who might have been hiding behind Shakespeare's name. And Amelia is just one of several of them. Interesting. And they get really angry because, you know, they've built a whole career on it. It's a cottage industry in Stratford. Um, but honestly, that is, uh, that's their right. When they come and write me, they also say, I haven't read your book, but you're wrong. 
<laughs> so, um, interesting. Yeah. There's that. Um, okay, so right now, 20 of your books are banned in 35 different states. Yeah. And just last month, you found out that your book, 19 Minutes, was the most banned book in the U.S. You say this is sort of like a trophy no one wants yeah. to win. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain totally. that? Wow. You know, um, I've been very vocal against book banning. It has ramped up to just uh, insane proportions since 2020. Um, book bans have increased 1,100% uh, in school libraries. 19 Minutes is a book about a school shooting. It actually used to be curriculum in about 30 states. And the book hasn't changed. That tells you America's changed, in case you guys weren't aware wow. of that. And, um, the reason that it's banned is not because it's about a school shooting, but because certain parents, who admittedly have even said they haven't read the book, have decided it's porn. Yes, because there is one page in the book where the word erection is mentioned. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's and scary. That's it. And I mean, you, what you were just talking about yes. before, that would not fly in America. You're, you're definitely not showing kids that stuff. You know, and, and the thing to me is that we know that when books are banned in schools, we are taking away tools that kids are using to deal with an increasingly complex world. Mm -hmm. We are not helping the kids. We are actually harming them. Yes, we are. Fascinating. Jody, we could talk to you all day. Fascinating. Yes. Fascinating. <laughs> Thank you for coming. My pleasure. <laughs> Right now, make sure to pick up a copy at your local bookstore because you can here. Yes. Hey, you, come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below and don't miss out.